In this video, we'll look at triangles more carefully. An equilateral triangle is one where all three sides are the same length. An isosceles triangle is a triangle that has two sides the same length. And a scalene triangle has no equal sides. A right triangle is a triangle that has one right angle. And a right triangle does not depend on the length of the sides. Um, it could be isosceles, it could be scalene, um, and still be a right triangle. So in example one, we're going to label each triangle as equilateral, isosceles, or scalene, and then we'll put a star inside the triangles that are right triangles. So if we look at our first example, A, we can see that this side is 3.09, this side is 4.31, and this side is 3.57. Those sides are all different, so it's a scalene triangle. If we look at B, this side is 4, this side is 4, and this side is 4. So those are all the same length, so we have an equilateral triangle. C has a 4.15 here and a 4.15 here and 7.62 here. That's two sides that are same, so we call it an isosceles triangle. This size ha triangle has 5.94, 5.94, and 8.4, so it's also isosceles. Let's look at the angle measurements in this triangle. Here we have 45, and here we have 45. Remember that angles inside of a triangle have to add up to 180. So if I take 180 minus 45 minus 45, I get 90. So this triangle, this angle, angle A, needs to be a right angle. So that means because there's one right angle here, this is a right triangle, and we'll put a star inside of it. So part E here has an angle measurement of 60 degrees and an angle measurement of 60 degrees. If I take 180 minus 60 minus 60, I get 60. So that means this angle here is also 60. Now this you have to know a little bit more about triangles. If all three angles are the same length, it means all three sides are the same length and we have an equilateral triangle. And then example F, here we have three, here we have four, here we have five. That means that this is scalene because they're all different. But we have a right angle marked right here, so it's a right triangle, and we'll put a star inside of it. Pythagorean theorem, this is a theorem a lot of people remember, but don't always remember how to use it correctly. The Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And the important thing, or the first important thing to remember, is that this only works if you have a right triangle. If you don't have a right triangle, it is you cannot use the Pythagorean theorem on it. C is the side that is across from the right angle. It's called the hypotenuse. This is the other thing we have to be really careful about when we use this, that C has to be the side across from the right angle. A and B are the two sides that touch the right angle. So we'll look at our next example here. This says measurements are centimeters, round to the nearest tenth and we're trying to find M. So here we have three, here we have four, here's our right angle, so a side across from it has to be our C. So we'll write our formula down, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now the three or the four, either one can be A or B, we'll just call the three A and the four B. So three squared plus four squared equals M squared. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and 
and then we want to add those together. So we get 25 is equal to m squared. And remember to get rid of the squared, we take the square root of both sides. And the square root of 25 is 5. So we know that m is 5 centimeters. So here's another one. Here's our right angle, so across from that would be our C, and the two sides next to it would be A and B. So we can write our formula, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, or 36 squared plus 20 squared is equal to M squared. 36 squared is 1,296, 20 squared is 400. If we add those together, we get 1,696. And then we'll take the square root of both sides so that we get m by itself. And that gives us 41.1825, keeps going. Nearest tenth would be this one right here. The 8 after it tells us to round the 1 up, so we'd have 41.2 centimeters. Example C, and here's our right angle, so we go across from it, and that's our C. This can be our A and our B. The A and B can be switched again. We'll write our formula down first. So A this time is M, B is 48, and C is 50. So we'll do 48 squared is 2,304. 50 squared is 2,500. Well, notice this time the M isn't by itself, so we need to subtract 2,304 from both sides. We get 196. And now the M is by itself, we can take the square root of both sides. And we get 14. So we have 14 centimeters. So again, we need to look for a right angle. Here's our right angle. Across from it is M. So this will be our A and our B. So we have 9 squared plus 6 squared is equal to M squared. So this is 81 plus 36 is equal to M squared. This is 117 equals M squared. We'll take the square root of both sides, and we get 10.8166, and it keeps going. We're trying to round to this spot. The number after it is 1, so we're going to leave the 8 and 8, and we'll have 10.8 centimeters. Again, we look for the right angle across from it to the 19, so this will be C. A and B are the other two sides in either order. So here I'll have M squared plus 11 squared equals 19 squared. 11 squared is 121. 19 squared is 361. I'll subtract 121 from both sides to get m squared by itself. You have to do that before you can take a square root. And we'll take the square root of both sides. And we get 15.4919 keeps going. Nearest tenth is right there, so this number after it tells us to go up to a 5, and we get 15.5 centimeters.
centimeters.